Welcome back students. We are on our final lesson or final example for divided produce or charts. Just to recap, we looked at calculating ingredients using the pure ingredient, using one ingredient, more than one ingredient, source of ingredient being the attriturate photo, source of ingredient being the tablet, and now we are looking at calculation of ingredients for divided powders when the active ingredient is not with. Now this is a source of anxiety for students because they panic when the ingredient is not with. But I can assure you that if I can do the calculations, then you can do the calculations. As a matter of fact, by the end of this lesson, all of you will be teaching me different ways of doing our calculations. So if you have gone through metrology and looked at the various methods of weighing very, very small quantities, then that concept will be used here. We haven't used it much from the examples previously, but we will definitely be using it here. This example says, calculate the ingredients necessary for preparing the prescription below using the stock of granny to be pure powder, given the least weighable quantity of the balance used. Balance used in is 120 milligrams. Now, this is the same question that we used previously, but the difference is that the stock that is available to you is pure powder. If you recall, from the calculations, the amount of ranitidine that we calculated would not have been weighable. All right, so the first thing we're going to be looking at is whether the least weight, what the least weighable is, which is 120. We already went through this, that the number of doses to be supplied is three, but because we're working with powders and we invariably are going to have some loss, we're going to calculate 40% excess of the total powders requested. And therefore, we're going to be making a total of five charts. If you recall from the last example, each chart will contain 10 milligrams of ranitidine. Now, because we're calculating for five charts, the total active ingredient will be 50 milligrams. This, unfortunately, is not real. We determine the source of the active ingredient. In the last example, it was a tablet, but this time it's not. This time it is a pure drug. So the compounder must make the amount needed weighable by using either the aliquot method or the least weighable method of weighing. So I want you to dig down in your brains to remember those two methods. And we're going to look at those two methods in this example. For those of us who like the aliquot method, we are now going to recall that in the aliquot method, we are going to be weighing much more than we would want based on a multiple or a factor. And how we do determine that, we determine that by dividing the least weighable amount divided by the quantity requested. The quantity requested is 50 milligrams and the least weighable amount is 120. So our multiple is 2.4. If we recall, the multiple to be used does not necessarily have to be 2.4. It can be greater. Of course, it can't be less but it must be greater. So it can be greater than or equal to 2.4. If you use a multiple that is greater than 2.4, it means that your powder mass is now going to increase. And it simply means that the amount of active that you're going to weigh is going to be more. So you're going to weigh more active, you're going to be weighing more diluent. That has implications in that if the ranitidine is very costly, it's a very potent drug and it is very costly, 
it means that you're you're um, costing in compounding the ingredient is or compounding the, the product is going to be transferred either to the patient or you're going to absorb. So we try to be as conservative as possible. So we use the multiple that is calculated that is uh, going to translate to the least stable quantity. You can also recall that we are going to weigh something and the amount that we are going to be weighing is going to be 2.4 times that of what it is that we really want. So how we calculate the total amount of drug that we are actually going to weigh, it is the multiple times the amount of ranity being requested. In other words, we're going to be weighing 2.4 times that of 50, which is 120 milligrams. We then will determine the quantity of mixture that needs to be prepared in order for us to weigh the 50 milligrams. Again, that is determined by multiplying the multiple times the amount of ranitidine that we will actually be weighing. Since we'll be actually weighing 120, it means that the amount of mixture that is going to be prepared is going to be 2.4 time, 2 times more than the amount of active ingredient that we are actually going to weigh. So that works out to be 288 milligrams of total powder mixture. This total powder mixture is going to contain the 120 milligrams of ranitidine that we are actually going to weigh out plus a certain amount of diluent. And that diluent works out to be 168 milligrams because we are subtracting 120 from the total powder mass. So your formula is going to be ranitidine powder 120 and diluent, which is either lactose in, in, um, or starch 168. We're going to mix them together and then we're going to determine what proportion of that mixture is going to contain the 50 milligrams that we are trying to weigh. I want to hasten to say that many times the diluent is not weighed. We are not going to encounter that here, but there are times when the diluent is not going to be weighable and you're going to have to make it weighable. But we will meet upon those kinds of questions as we progress. So the next step now is to determine the percentage strength of your mixture. You're using 120 milligrams of ranitidine and mixing it with a certain amount of diluent to produce a total powder mass of 288 milligrams. So in order to determine the strength of that mixture, you put the total amount of active divided by the total amount of mixture times 100%. And that gives you a 41.7% weight and weight mixture. This is what we call a triturate. So in order for you to make this prescription, you're going to have to make a solid in solid triturate to obtain your 50 milligrams from which you're now going to use to make your charts. Again, our whole aim and objective for using the aliquot method is to weigh 50 milligrams of ranitidine. Therefore, we need to select the aliquot that will contain the 50 milligrams. Total mixture divided by the multiple usually gives you the amount of um, mixture that you need to remove that will contain the 50 milligrams of vanity in the test. However, you can always use ratio and proportion to confirm. If 120 milligrams is in 288 milligrams of total powder mixture, then 50 milligrams will be in X. And I'm sure you're going to end up back with 120 milligrams. So what does this mean, really? This means that you're going to mix 120 milligrams of ranitidine with 168 milligrams of lactose, for example. Mix them using geometric dilution, and then you're going to remove 120 milligrams of that mixture that will contain the 50 milligrams of ranitidine that was requested. We have lactose one here, and I just want to say that you are making two mixtures, really. You're making a triturate mixture that is 
So that means you're going to be using lactose for that mixture. If we now continue to make the trick charts, it means we're going to use more diluent to make the charts. So you're going to be weighing lactose twice, and we'll see that as we go along. Just remember, lactose one. What if you're using the least weighable method? The least weighable method requires you to determine the actual amount of ranitidine that you need for the entire five charts first. You need to establish that is 50 milligrams. You also need to establish what the least weighable quantity is, which we have already established. And the third step requires you to determine the aliquot of a concentrated triturate mixture that will contain 50 milligrams. So let 50 milligrams of ranitidine be contained in 120 milligrams of the triturate. This is your statement. This is your concentration. Then we're going to select the amount of drug to be weighed. Because we're using the least weighable method, we usually, traditionally, use the least weighable quantity. Then 120 milligrams of active drug will be weighed. So what does this look like? If 50 milligrams of the drug will be contained in 120 milligrams of triturant or aliquot, then 120 milligrams of the drug that we can actually weigh will be contained in X milligrams of triturant or mixture. Again, you notice we're getting the 288 milligrams. While I can't weigh 50 milligrams, I can weigh 120 milligrams if I make a triturant that makes, that says that every 120 milligrams of that triturate will contain 50 milligrams. How do I make that triturate? I have to determine how much drug now I'm going to weigh to make a triturate that allows me to take out 120 milligrams of it that contains 50 milligrams. Because I can weigh 120, I am now going to say if 50 milligrams of the drug is in 120, then 120 milligrams of the drug will be just to make a note here that the amount of drug that you are going to weigh need not be 120. It can be more. Of course, it can't be less. It can be more. If it is more than the 120 or more than the least weighable, then it's not traditionally a least weighable method, but that does not make it wrong. Okay? Again, if I am mixing 120 milligrams, with a certain amount of diluent to get 280 milligrams of total mixture, then I need to find out what that diluent is. I simply subtract 120 from 280 to get 168. So it looks like this. I go to my stock. I weigh 120 milligrams of powder. I weigh 168 milligrams of diluent one. I mix them together to form a total mixture of 288 milligrams. And it is from this total mixture that I'm going to remove a certain amount that will contain the 50 milligrams that I'm trying to do. Again, we're going to ensure before we move on that all of our ingredients are available. So the available stock that I now need to make my five charts is going to be 120 milligrams of ranitidine powder and 168 milligrams of lactose. Mix them together, remove 120 milligrams, and that 120 milligrams that contains the 50 milligrams that I want to make my five charts is what now I'm going to use to make, to continue with my compounding. So I have to continue with the calculations now. So once I made this mixture here and remove my 120 milligrams, I will now say what proportion of that 120 milligram will contain the amount required for each chart. Will it be weighable? 120 milligrams is weighable, but if I'm to divide that 120 milligram into five separate portions, will it be weighable? No, it won't. 
because 120 milligrams of triturate powder divided by five charts is going to give me 24 milligrams. And that's not really. So what does that mean? It means then that I'm going to have to make the charge weighable so that I can individually wrap five charts. So at this point, we are going to let one charge weigh greater than or equal to 120. Again, in our compounding pharmacy, we try to be as conservative as possible. So we let one charge weigh 120. Therefore, five charts will weigh 600 milligrams. So that means 120 milligrams of the ranitidine 4 to 1.7% triturate powder will now be combined with a certain amount of bilirubin to produce 600 milligrams of your total powder mixture. Therefore, I need to determine what that diluent is. In order to determine the diluent, I need to subtract 120 milligram triturate powder from 600 milligram total mixture to get 480 milligrams. What does this look like in terms of what I'm going to weigh from what I'm going to mix? It means then that I'm going to combine 120 milligrams of my ranitidine 4 to 1.7 percent triturate powder with lactose 2, 480 milligrams. Now notice I said lactose 2. Remember in the previous slides we had lactose 1. It simply means that you're going to make two formulations. One formulation is to obtain the ranitidine 41.7% triturate powder 120. You use a certain amount of lactose then. You use 120 gram, milligrams of ranitidine pure powder plus 168 milligrams of lactose. Mix them together. Remove this. And it is this now that contains the 50 milligrams of ranitidine that you wanted. You're now going to combine this with a portion of lactose, lactose 2, 480 milligrams of it, to get your 600 milligrams of total powder. Then you are going to individually wrap five portions of the 600 milligrams that each will contain 10 milligrams of ranitidine. And that 10 milligrams of ranitidine will now be contained in each 120 milligram portions of the 600 milligrams. So that is why we have lactose too. I want you to start, start thinking like this because when you get to the lab, you will now recognize that you're going to be making essentially two triturate mixtures. The first mixture is to obtain this and the second mixture is to mix this plus a certain amount of lactose to make your charts. So just to reiterate, um, you can either use the aliquot method to make your powder weighable or you can use the least weighable. You will not be bound as to which one of the methods to use. Pretty much you're going to use the one that you're most comfortable with. I prefer the least weighable method because I don't have to remember the steps. Which multiple to be multiplied by what and what to be multiplied by what. I am not very okay with that. I like to reason things out. So this way that allows me to do that. But any way that, is, that you're comfortable with, you should use that. So this is the technique that you will use to calculate the ingredients necessary if your um, active ingredient is not available.